Resident Evil. One of the biggest names in the horror game genre has been around for 25 years and has seen 28 different games, and all of them are connected to the same universe. Kind of like Capcom's own Infinity Saga. Although the game's success has led to countless appearances and cameos in other video games, and its own entire film franchise of the same name, in this video we're going to be looking solely on the games and what made people love the franchise so much and label it as one of the biggest horror games of all time. The Resident Evil games take horror way more seriously than other horror games or even movies do. They focus on what makes people scared, paranoid and even claustrophobic. Oh, and not to mention, they love their jump scares. The franchise was kicked off and started all the way back in the now iconic Raccoon City. Introducing us to all our iconic and most loved characters such as Jill Valentine, Chris Redfield, Claire Redfield, Carlos Oliveira, Ada Wong and of course Leon Kennedy. The first three games see us take control of all of these characters and we see them uncover the mystery of the outbreak and try to take down the people who caused it. The Umbrella Corporation. The Umbrella Corporation created a virus known as the G-Virus which turns people into indestructible monsters. And then they sell this virus to the highest bidder in order to stay one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. The series sticks with this aspect and sticks to the generic zombies but adds a twist when it comes to the bosses. The bigger and harder enemies always have these huge orangish eyes on their body which are their weak points and destroying these either kills them or makes the boss stumble so he can deal extra damage while they are stunned. However, as the franchise went on, multiple variants of the G-Virus were created, which created all sorts of monstrosities, but as we get to Resident Evil 7 and 8, the story makes a stereotype switch up and introduces us to the Mold, or as it is known as the E-Virus. We stray away from the traditional George Romero style zombies, instead we get introduced to the aptly named Molded. What the These are creatures that are fully transformed by the mold or e-virus and are a lot taller, quicker, tougher and have stronger attacks. And in Resident Evil 8 we are introduced to the first ever infected creatures in the Resident Evil timeline, the Lycans and the Maroika, which are basically just vampires and werewolves. Next up, bosses. Resident Evil is notorious for its boss fights. From fighting a giant mutated William Birkin in Resident Evil 2 to fighting a huge dragon slash vampire hybrid in Resident Evil 8, they never hold back on their boss fights and every single one feels different. The first boss we're going to look at is the iconic, terrifying stalker known as Mr. X. Mr. X is a very scary boss. Not only can you not fully kill him, until the end of the game that is, you always have to keep a listen out for him because he could be anywhere which makes him one of the most scary and intimidating bosses from any of the games. Next up, Nemesis. Again, another iconic and unkillable boss. Again, until the end of the game, that is. Throughout your time playing as Jill in Resident Evil 3, Nemesis is sent to kill her as she is the only remaining Stars member left. Nemesis stops at nothing to try and kill you, from running after you and jumping in front of you, to using a huge flamethrower or even a massive rocket launcher to kill Jill. He is one of those bosses that always comes back, even when they seem to be killed which makes gameplay very intimidating as you never know where he will be next. One last boss I'm going to talk about is the iconic and most intimidating boss of all, Jack Baker. In my personal opinion, one of the scariest bosses to fight, and to top it all off, you don't just fight him once, you fight him around five times, each fight being way different to the others before. One of his more scary and better fights is the final fight with the mutated Jack. He transforms into this huge, mold-infested, slug-like creature with multiple eyes all over his body for you to destroy. In my opinion, Jack is one of the best enemies in the Resident Evil franchise, and who can forget his iconic quote. Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> While bosses are a huge staple in the history of Resident Evil, the games are also well known for including puzzles, whether they be big or small, such as the perspective shadow puzzles in Resident Evil 7, which require you to move an object into a certain angle to create the shape of an animal such as an eagle or the very short but very fun slash challenging if you didn't watch the happy birthday tape that is Lucas's happy birthday challenge in Resident Evil 7 which sees you attempt to simply put a candle on a cake but this being Resident Evil there's always something that stops you or even the game's very small puzzles, such as the portable safes in Resident Evil 2, or the subway reroute in Resident Evil 3. 
Having a small puzzle like these helps take an edge off and leave you vulnerable to more jump scares as you've been distracted with said puzzles. One puzzle I would like to mainly focus on is the incredibly terrifying Beneviento Mannequin puzzle in Resident Evil 8. This sees you trapped in a room with a mannequin of Ethan's wife Mia on a table. You have to use this mannequin to find parts or pieces that you can use to escape, such as the medallion or the silver key. Once you escape the room with the mannequin and manage to find the fuse box to repair the elevator, this is where the puzzle hits the fan. As you ascend from finding the key in a well, you hear the cries of an unseen baby. But don't worry, they don't stay unseen for long. This then turns into a cat and mouse game, where you have to find the fuse for the elevator so you can escape, whilst also trying to escape the demon baby. Once you find the fuse and return it to the elevator, and narrowly escape being consumed by the baby, you go back through the house until you see Beneviento and her doll Angie, who you now have to hunt down and kill. This sees you travelling around the house looking for the doll, whilst walking past other dolls that twitch and freak out as you walk past them, easily making this mission slash puzzle one of the creepiest moments in the entire Resident Evil series. And that's going to wrap up this video, while there are millions of other things that make the Resident Evil franchise terrifying. I'm not going to go through them all in this video because I don't want to make you guys sit here for two and a half hours. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like and leave a comment explaining some of your favourite moments from Resident Evil. And why not subscribe while you're at it? It's free, all you have to do is click a button and that's it. Anyway, this has been Aaron from Adamo Gaming and I will see you in the next one. Where do you think you're going? <laughs>